Here's the question. Is it too late to hoard stuff? Well, it's never too late for you to, to make responsible provision for your loved ones, ever. Whether you make the effort to hunt, to gather, to produce, to collect, to save, to stockpile and store, it's never too late for that. But hoarding is not recommended because the word infers selfishness. The holding of things that you don't need and others do, especially things you never plan to need anyway. The word hoarder is now being thrown around as an accusation against responsible people who have, who have attempted to think ahead, to think realistically, and to hunt, gather, produce, collect, save, and, and store things. Now, so this term has become a pop culture pejorative. And people who plan and save and stockpile are being vilified now and then marginalized as bad people who are taking things from the rest of us. Let me give an example of this when we come back. We're talking about whether it's wrong to buy things that you and your community will need for next month or next year, for the next five or 10 years. I heard an accusation just last April and it went like this. Someone is hoarding all the baby chicks, so nobody else can buy any, nobody else can have any. And it's true, there really was a sudden nationwide shortage of baby chicks. Demand was far larger than supply. And I remember that, we, we wanted to buy some and we were a little bit too late right at the time. But just maybe, let's think about this, maybe the little girl who had the foresight to buy them at the right time before they all disappeared and to buy chicken feed, maybe she's not the villain in this story. Maybe she's the leader. Maybe she's the heroine in your community who's in the process of creating protein for the rest of us when the, when the food supply chains totally break down. You know, it's not easy to keep baby chicks alive to adulthood so that they will breed, they can make, have more chicks, they can lay eggs, they can make drumsticks for us and buffalo wings. It's, it's not easy to keep them alive. In most cases, the buyers with the foresight are the most responsible people around us. They're scanning the horizon for the day when there's no fried chicken to be had. And what they are doing is neither wrong nor destructive. It's really smart and it's really responsible. Even the Dallas Federal Reserve acknowledges the storm on the horizon and has for several years. This quote, comes from an official meeting several years ago. When economic prospects are at their brightest, the dangers of complacency and recklessness are the greatest. Prosperity, as prosperity proceeds on its record-breaking path, it behooves every one of us to scan the horizon of our national and international economy for danger signals so as to be ready for any storm. Well, the storm is, is here. And it's true that even agencies like the Department of Homeland Security, the Red Cross and FEMA, and ready.gov have all recommended a basic level of food storage and supply storage to all American citizens. And yeah, the government itself keeps vast secret stockpiles of medications and supplies. And this is smart. And yes, every single American should do what is recommended at ready.gov at the very least three days worth of emergency food and water and first aid and medicine. So why are the people who do this, the pro-responsibility people, the planners and the stockpilers, why are they vilified by the government bureaucrats and their enablers in the dominant media? I, I'm not sure, but maybe it's because the responsible folks are preparing for an event that lasts more than the government approved three-day prep window. If citizens could take care of themselves, really genuinely take care of themselves completely without any safety nets, any welfare, any bailouts, any central planning, what need would there be for these massive paternalistic governments or nanny governments? There, wouldn't, there would be no need. There would be no need for ruling elites who want total control and power. So this is why they never encourage substantial responsibility in citizens. Authoritarians want dependent and helpless citizens. Authoritarian bureaucrats enlarge their powers further as weak and irresponsible people
begin to panic or shrink back and they give up their freedom in exchange for security. And a lot of that's happening now, but there are those who are taking steps to be optimistic, to get what they can, to put it back, look at the storm on the horizon and try to realize, yeah, there's, there is a storm here and we need to be more responsible. So let's get back to your question. It's, it is never too late to sell the stuff you don't need, to buy what you do need, and to think about providing for your family and even your community. And that's what I really recommend. Just Not just for your own little household, and not even for your own little neighborhood, but even a little bit broader than that. A community that could find itself short on everything is, is a community that needs people who are responsible and have foresight and are doing everything they can to try to try to provide, not only for themselves, but they're looking out for others. They're watching the backs of their neighbors. So if you cannot raise chickens or plant a small garden, help your neighbors who can. And then in the meantime, buy the kinds of investments that you can trade for food or for, for you know, the kinds of things that are really valuable in a crisis, salt and sugar and medicinal vodka, over-the-counter medications, maps, first aid supplies, toilet paper, nine millimeter ammunition is, is really a good form of currency. Junk silver is, is very handy in a, in a steep crisis. Uh, gasoline and diesel stored away. Acquire the things which will be worth their weight in silver during a crisis. But let me give you this warning, please. As you start putting things into storage, you start doing this, <laughs> And you get really creative at it. And so I've, I've seen some people who really are. They're really, really good at it. And they, they learn about which things really will be valuable when the time comes. Here's my warning. Don't try to inspire your neighbors who are kind of lazy at this. Don't inspire them to do the same thing by taking them into your basement or wherever and showing off your awesome stash of stuff. Just keep it a secret inspire your neighbors in other ways. And the best way is to be responsible by helping around the community. Help pull weeds in the gardens, but don't, with the permission of the owners of the gardens, please don't go in there and just start pulling weeds. You, don't, you may not know what's a weed and what's, uh, and what's a valuable plant, okay? But there are things you can do. Get with your neighbors, talk to them, ask them how you can help in some ways. Resource supplies at good prices and tell your neighbors where those supplies are available. That's one thing that's really helpful if you can do that and you have a tip for other people in the community. So serving the broader community is the more important investment you'll make in preparation. And here's where I close. By far, the most important thing that you can store up is a good name and a good reputation. So work on that while you sacrifice to acquire some of the other basics that I've mentioned. Please share this content with your friends. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to get announcements on new content.